What's going on guys, Gaston right here and today we're going to be talking about something that I talked about years ago when I was covering the rumors of the ESR and I mentioned that Canon was going to design a brand new camera that was going to be small in size similar to an XC15 and mixed with an ESR and that camera actually was announced today and that is the C70 which is in my opinion one of the craziest and most amazing camera cinema cameras ever created so we're going to talk about some of the features we're also going to be sharing some of the images that tells us the story what this camera is going to be about we're going to tell you how much this camera is going to cost you coming right up Welcome back to the channel guys and in case you have been living under a rock and you don't know, I'm giving away a brand new Sony a7C to enter in this free giveaway. You simply subscribe to this channel right now, enable notifications and you must follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Gaston Shutters. I'm going to be announcing the winner on December 24th or the 25th. So worldwide entries, good luck to all of you guys. Now let's talk about this beautiful camera. Look at this. Look at the size of this camera. It looks like a uh, C500 and an EOS R5, you know, had a baby and this is the baby, the C70. Very small, very compact, yet we can see that we have all the buttons in the camera. And one of the coolest thing about this camera is that this one is the very first RF type of camera. So you're gonna be able to use all the RF glass that you already have in this camera natively. Now this camera also is going to allow you to use just like the Canon EOS R5 and R6, you know, adaptive glasses, EF glass. And Canon has designed something very, very particular for this. It is this adapter from EF to RF, giving you the full frame field of view of your lens. It's not crappy. Now this is incredible. Now with RF glass, I guess we're going to have to suffer a crop. So people with all their glass are going to rip the benefits of this adapter. And maybe Canon is going to release an adapter for the RF unless there is some sort of trick that I haven't heard of to actually get a full frame view in a Super 35 uh, crop mode. But let me know if you know anything about that. Now, what I want to talk about, guys, is some of the specs and, you know, I have them all written down here on my computer. You know, I try to put together, you know, the most important things. And the first one is the sensor of this camera. This camera is going to feature the same sensor of the uh, C300 Mark III. Now this one is the 4K Super 35 millimeter sensor of 9.6 megapixels. So 9.6 megapixels means that we're gonna have huge pixels. This camera is gonna be great in low light situations. Now this one is also the DGL sensor, dual gain output. And what it is is basically super cool. Uh, every single photo diode gets actually read twice at the same time in two different gain output. Then it combines the exposure maintaining the lower levels of noise of the lower gain and the higher levels of saturation from the higher gain. All this happens, you know, automatically, instantly giving you great color in your image, super clean image, you know, with very low noise and also with the utmost dynamic range. Now this camera is going to do up to 16 stop plus of dynamic range. That is actually crazy, guys. The Canon EOS R5 barely does 11 stops of dynamic range. The human eye can do 24. This camera can do 16. So this is, you know, in line with the cinema cameras and, uh, you know, to have it in such a small form factor is actually incredible. Now, let me tell you a little bit about, you know, the 4K capabilities of this camera. So you're going to be able to do 4K 60p 10-bit internal 422. Now, you're going to be able to record internally onto two SD cards because we don't have CF Express here, which I really appreciate. Now, you're going to be able to achieve the 60p only when you shoot in H.264 long GOP, because when you shoot in all intra, you're only going to get up to 4K, uh, 4K 30p. Yeah, no bad at all, guys. So um, pretty capable. And I'm actually happy that we are going to have SD cards and not having to spend, you know, on very expensive uh uh, CF Express card also, you know, helps the camera to be smaller, of course. Now, speaking about being small, we can see right here in this picture that we have a grill. You know, we have also two mini XLR inputs right there. And you can see the two buttons right there for the built-in 10-stop ND filter. So, some reason can manage to actually stick ND filters here. And this is something that you can find in the much more expensive cameras. You know, we're going to have it in this camera. And let me actually tell you the price about this camera because this one is going to go for $5,500, $5,499 versus the C300 Mark III, which it goes for around $10,000 and the uh, 500 goes for around $15,000, $16,000. So for $5,500, you're pretty much getting a very, 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 very similar experience. 
that was kind of weird. Yeah, so you're basically getting like a pretty similar experience, actually the same experience as the much more expensive cameras. And of course, there are pros about the much more expensive cameras, but you know, you have pretty much everything that you want in this one. Now, this camera also is gonna have embodied image stabilization, digital, and it's gonna allow you to combine that image stabilization with the image stabilization of your uh, lenses. So you are gonna be able to connect the, uh, just like Canon EOS R5, synchronize both image stabilization, giving you the utmost stability in your footage. Now, when you adapt the glass, you know, EF to RF, you're not gonna get, you know, the synchronization of both, uh, you know, the IVs from the camera and the image stabilization on the lens, but you're gonna be able to access the image stabilization off the lens with some correction that's gonna happen in the camera. So that is actually really, really good. Now, let's talk about color profiles because this is one of the areas where we were bitching about the Canon EOS R5 and R6 not having enough. But for what? Uh, $1,500 more, you know, you can pretty much have them all. Now, check this out. We're gonna have Rec 709, uh, YDR, C-Log 2 and 3. Now, let's stop right here because remember that I mentioned before that this camera is gonna do 16 stop of dynamic range. Okay, this is only gonna happen when you're actually shooting in C-Log. Now, C-Log, it's actually a little bit harder to grade. It's gonna take you more time and it requires a lot of experience to get the colors right, at least for me. Now, again, the C look that I'm used to is not from cinema cameras anyway. So C look three is gonna be much easier to grade, but what you're gonna suffer here is that you're gonna only obtain up to 14 stops of dynamic range, which is plenty dynamic range, you know, in my opinion, knowing that the Canon EOS R5 only does barely 10 and a half, 11 stops of dynamic range. So pretty good. Also, you're gonna have HDR PQ and HDR HLG for your high dynamic range options. So awesome. Now, this camera also features a new feature called Look File, and what it is, you know, some other cameras have, of course, but it allows you to import that Q3D uh, LUT file. So you're gonna be able to basically grade your footage as you're seeing it while shooting in low profile. And this is really good as a reference to give you an idea how your footage is gonna end up at the end, you know, in grading. Obviously, it's not the same, but it's a pretty good reference. And it's a really good thing that this camera is gonna have just like the other much more expensive cameras. Now let's talk about autofocusing system because this camera is gonna feature the same dual pixel autofocusing system version two from the C300 Mark III. Uh, is it version two on that one? I believe so. So this one actually is one of the best, it's the one in the Canon ESR5. And you know, I think it's better than the one in the Sony cameras in my opinion right now. And you know, I never thought I would say that. But you're also gonna have the capability of you know using autofocus in all the slow motion modes, all the forking modes. You're also gonna be able to tap to focus. So this is actually incredible. Now this camera is gonna do some pretty crazy stuff again face recognition and just like the word says it's going to recognize people in the scene so you know i guess this is going to be great for you know weddings you know recognize the groom recognize you know the bride the grandson mom dad i mean we're going to have this crazy technology through deep learning into this new camera now this camera of course is not going to have an evf as you can see right there even though it has the little uh, elevation there and the hash mount but because you're not going to have an evf you know you have a pretty good lcd screen of 3.6 inches now just to compare with the one in the canon eos r5 that one is a 3.2 and the one on the r6 is a three inches so 3.6 is a lot bigger from you know what we're used to from the still cameras however you're going to be able to also put an external monitor if you want via hdmi and the good thing as you can see right there is that we're going to have a full size hdmi i mean this is great so, I mean, it's a cinema camera, I mean, it's expected, but another great thing about the built-in monitor in this camera is all the previews for your exposure that you're gonna have. So I'm gonna read them to you. So you're gonna have focus peaking, you're gonna have histogram, you're gonna have false color, grade aspect ratio guide, anamorphic preview, and also built-in D-squeeze inside this camera. I mean, th this is just great, guys. You know, these are all the things that you would have to actually go and buy a monitor that can do that, unless you have, you know, a cinema camera that has all these capabilities, but, all this stuff is gonna be built in in this tiny screen. Well, it's actually bigger than most screens that we're used to. So necessarily not having to log a lot of gear to start shooting, you know. This is a camera that was designed for easy deployment, go and shoot, and you know, this is gonna be a great camera to fly on a gimbal. This is gonna be a great camera to fly on a drone, and I've seen footage of this camera actually flying on a drone, although I will be super paranoid having like $10,000 of gear flying in the air just in cameras alone. And again, you know, this is one of the reasons why this camera is so attractive to me. Now, 
then following feature that I'm gonna mention to you may not mean anything to you, but it means a lot where Canon is actually heading in the future. Now, if you see right there, right under the uh, where the strap would be, there is a quarter mount screw, and this quarter mount screw is actually to mount the camera vertically. So you can put a, an Arca Swiss or simply screw it to, um, you know, a head or something like that. And they designed this because Canon is showing actually uh, a picture on an iPhone, a video on an iPhone. They designed this camera for social media. You know, it is built in there, ready for social media shooting. And again, gives you an idea that Canon is not only looking at, you know, filmmakers, you know, people that make movies, you know, documentaries. They're also catering to, with this camera to people that take social media seriously. Like, for example, ourselves in our companies that we have to create a lot of content for social media. This is how we actually make our money through videos, informative video through social media. So you're going to be able to shoot in the 16 by 9 ratio which is actually incredible. The camera's gonna be ready for that. I believe the menus also are gonna flip so you don't have to kind of like, you know, tilt your head to, to find your stuff. And, you know, this is a great, great, great thinking from Canon. I wonder what Sony is doing about it. Now, looking at the camera from the back, you know, you also can see similar layout as some of the other, you know, cinema cameras. You also have a joystick right there, you know, a magnification button right there. And you can also see the battery right there. This is the BPA-30 battery. And you can also use one of my aperture lights just right now, so I have to put another one. I hope that was the same color. But anyways, I was telling you that, you know, the battery that you're going to be able to use here is the uh, BPA-30 uh, battery. And also you're going to be able to use the BPA-60 for much extender uh, shooting time. Now, Canon is saying that you're going to get up to six hours. So I'm assuming that this is going to happen with a BPA-60 battery. But again, incredible camera, incredible features. You know, you're going to have pretty much what you're going to find in a C300, C500 camera, of course, you know, this camera is going to be stripped down from a lot of features, but most of the core essential features are in this camera for only $5,500. And yes, $5,500 is a lot of money, but when you're talking about cinema camera, right? I think it's great. Now, this camera is not gonna do 6K, this camera is not gonna do full frame, this camera is not gonna do 8K, but it's gonna do 4K, it's gonna do it right. And the best thing is that you're gonna get 16 stop of dynamic range, so, if you're looking for a camera for, you know, outdoor shooting, you know, bright situations, this one is going to be the camera to get. If you're looking for a camera that's going to give you cinematic uh, quality without actually spending an arm and a leg for your content in social media, uh, your professional content in social media, of course. Um, or if you're looking at an additional camera to add up to your, um, you know, army of cinema camera lines. You're also gonna have a BZN uh, timecode port right here to synchronize this camera with other cameras, you know, among your armies. Let me know if you're gonna be pre-ordering one. Let me know what do you like about this camera and what you don't like. Probably that it's not full frame, right? And speaking about full frame, let me know if you know how the uh, RF to, you know, RF mount is gonna work because, you know, it's gonna have to be cropped. But when you're using an EF, you actually gain the full view of full frame and get a stop of dynamic range. That is actually pretty crazy. Okay, guys, so... Until then, see you in the next video.